what is SSR, CSR and what the hell now these server components are. If you are learning web development or working in the web domain, then you must have heard these terms. And in today's video, I'm going to explain all three of them. Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Sneha. I make video on tech and my life in the UK. Let's understand what are these server side rendering or client side rendering. What we say, as I told you, SSR is known as server side rendering. CSR is known as client side rendering and server components, you might heard the term RSC, which is known as React Server Components, or you can call them server components. Before we jump into understanding all these, the first thing we should understand is what is rendering. Rendering in very simple term means generating UI so that you can see on your browser or basically creating the view or UI on your browser. React JS use rendering. So whenever we are doing any state change or any change we are doing, React under the hood, compare the virtual DOM with actual DOM and see where the changes happen. Take the decision that how our new, new UI should be and generate that and then it will render it. So basically it will return the JSX and then JSX will be rendered on our browsers so that we can see the new pages. And this compare, comparison of real DOM, virtual DOM with what the changes happened is known as the reconciliation. So this is what rendering is. Now, before we move ahead and understand what is server side rendering, client side rendering, we need to understand four three important thing. Client, server, request, response. The client is basically the browser either on your mobile, desktop or laptop. Server is your physical server or the cloud server if you are using or your project is using. Request is whenever we are requesting anything from our client browser and response would be the response of that uh, coming from the server. So this is the most simplest way I, I can explain you this client server request response. And these four things are very important to understand server side and client side rendering. So let's now move towards server side and client side rendering first to understand and then we will go to the server components. But before that, I want to talk about a little bit of history that how web used to be. In the past, before this whole evaluation, this whole change of uh, JavaScript landscape, <clears throat> we used to have multi-page application known as MPA also, if you want to short it, multi-page application. Now what it means that we will be creating the application either in PHP, Java, .NET or so on. All these pages will be deployed on the server and whenever from our client, our browser, we are requesting anything like facebook.com, the request will go to the server that I want to access facebook.com. So the home page of facebook.com, which could be PHP, Java, .NET, will be written as a response at the client side. Now I clicked on the about us of the facebook.com. So again, it will go to the server. The request will, uh, in the response, the about page will come and it will be shown at the client. Now for every route or every page will, every about contact service, blah, blah, blah. Every such route or link will have its own independent page. And whenever uh, from the browser, we are trying to access that, that request will go to the server and server will get us that specific independent page and return at the client side. This is known as the multi-page application. Now, why I'm telling you? Because React.js and most of the UI libraries, now whatever the applications we are creating, they are not multi-page application. They are single page application, SPA. In single page application, we do not go for everything to the server. What we do is we do initial render from the server. And after that, all these reaching to about contact or different pages will be done at the client side. And this is where our client side rendering and server side rendering come in picture. So now let's go and understand in depth what is a server side rendering or SSR and how it works. So the first thing what will happen is our, our, uh, at our client side, we are going to request a URL, okay, like facebook.com. So this request will go to our server. So this is our step one. Now from the server, what will happen? It is going to give us, sorry, not this. It is going to return or give us the response of this. Now the, ins 
Now in the response, which is a step two, what we are gonna get? So it is gonna give us HTML, CSS, JS. So facebook.com we requested, so it is gonna return us a HTML, CSS, JS page. All the CSS and JS is already there. Links are there, JavaScript is already there. So it will be written here on our client side. So this is basically our, sorry, this is basically our first render. Now first rendering has been happened and after that what will happen is we are going to wait and our page will become interactive. How it is going to interactive between first render and interactive? There is a phase also known as rehydration. In rehydration what will happen? Our HTML and all the DOM elements with the events and everything will start getting connected, uh, sorry, start getting associated with each other. Before that, it's just a HTML, CSS, JS page. And then what will happen, all the API requests or whatever the, whatever we want from the server to make this page start working, uh, that will be start, that will start coming. So after interactive, if I will, I need some API data to be there, it will come. If I click on something and I'm requesting for API, that will come. And this is how our uh, server side rendering works. So right now if you have what I said that we are requesting a URL it is probably a home page facebook.com so now let's talk in tem that term facebook.com request went it will return us the home page HTML with CSS link and JS script tags it will come here it will render it will wait for the interaction to it will wait for the page to become interactive once it has become interactive, now when you are clicking on anything and you want some API data, that interactive interactivity will be increased. Uh, sorry, that interactivity will come and <clears throat> API request will go to the server and server will return the data and our page will uh, get that data. Now I clicked on about us. I'm still on my home page. I click on about us. Same thing will happen. It will go to server. It will return HTML, CSS, JS of about us. Our first render will happen, rehydration will happen, interactivity will happen. Now I click on contact us, same thing will happen. Now again I click on home page, same thing will happen. So if you have figured it out, <coughs> the problem with server side rendering is the performance. Because for everything we are going back to the server, which is a costly affair. So the performance is getting compromised. Also the user experience will be compromised because the user has to wait. And if there is a delay from the server request from the server, then it will be a very bad user. So these are the two very big downside of server side rendering. But the positive side of server side rendering is SEO, search engine optimization. Because everything is coming from server, everything, uh, our whole HTML content would be visible at the client side. So the SEO is very good here. Whenever you are creating a SEO friendly website, go for the SSR. <clears throat> now, what is client side? Now, because of the performance issues and the user experience, the, the best thing is to have client side rent. Now what we are going to do is the few things I will copy from here. So what we have done is we are doing the same thing. We are requesting facebook.com. It went to the server. Now what server is going to do just like our uh, server side com server side uh, uh, rendering. It will return us HTML, CSS and JS. But this would be our app shell. Now what is app shell? It will have a basic skeleton of our HTML, CSS and JS. Uh, with our CSS and JS and the basic HTML skeleton so, sorry not basic skeleton HTML a shell it will not be like whole index page or about us page or something but it will be a skeleton so a blank HTML page with CSS link and JS now after this what will happen is now the JS will take over of everything so now what JS will do is if we are doing use effect and API request we are doing <clears throat> so JS will do this use effect API request will go to the server, it will return and then our content rendering will happen. And now I clicked on about us page. So now the request will not go to the server. So I will click on about us. I already have app shell, so nothing will happen here. But this JS will identify that, oh, okay, I click on about us. Where is our about us code? And what I have to do uh, logically, do I need to hide, hide the current content and then display about us? If yes, it will do that and then the content rendering will happen. Now I click on the contact us, same, the JS JavaScript or our logic will check that what is happening 
uh, now I have to hide the about us content. Yes. And now display the contact us contents. So then content rendering will happen. So if you will see in client side rendering, we are not going to our server again and again. Our, our all routing or page serving is happening at the client side. If we have API requests like on contact us, I, I clicked on a page and it, it needs a server data or a API data from the server. Then that only that request will go to the server rather than all pages requests are going there. So in client side rendering, we have optimized our performance. We have improved our user experience. However, we have compromised on SEO. So whenever you have to decide, do you need to use client side rendering or server side rendering? You need to ask the question, do I need SEO? If yes, then the answer would be server side rendering. Otherwise it would be client side rendering. I hope this was, uh, I hope you are able to understand this client side and server side concept because on the basis of this, our server components are uh, are based. Okay, so now let's move to the server components. Now, if 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 you have seen in server side and client side rendering, uh, in client side rendering we are working with the JavaScript only. But if I will submit any form data or if I am doing a API request, so my whole content, whole my logic would be written in some different language. In server side also, uh, on my server I will be either in, either using PHP. Uh, .NET, Java, or might be Node.js. So where I am writing a React.js code in at client side, my server side language would be different. So what React team ha uh, did was they introduced the concept of server components. I think they introduced it two to three years back. I might not be uh, correct here. Uh, so just do your own research. Next.js has already implemented server components. With the latest release, Next.js, all the components by default are server components. React.js with React 19 will be introducing uh, the support of server components in react which is a very good thing because now natively it will be available in react but what are these server components so in server components what you will be doing is or what we will be doing is if i have a code which i want to run at the server for example data submission in a, a database so i have a form at my client side in react.js on click of that form the data should be submitted in a database now data should be submitted in database at code currently we would be either in, either writing in node.js php java or any other language but with server components this will change now we can write that code in react.js and that code because we want that to run on server because database communication will happen with the help on the server communication we can run that code on our servers and that code is known as the server component so what we will be doing is we will be writing a component the same way we write our component right now whatever the code we are going to write in that that code will run on the server now the question comes is how the hell react will get to know that it's a server component or not so for that react.js team has introduced a directive use server so whenever you are creating a component and in that component, whichever component you want to run at the server side on, on the top of that file, you will write use server so that react will understand that this code needs to run at the server, not at the client side. Now let's see. So this is my project. It is next year's based, but I want to give you an idea. So if you will see at this code, this looks like a normal component of your React.js. But actually because this is Next.js and by default Next.js has support for server components. So this code actually run on server. But we are talking about React.js. So in React.js, all I need to write is use server. Now it will become a server site component or server component. Now this line number four, import product listing. This product listing is a component which is which which is responsible for creating a list and this is actually a client side component now here what i am doing is the name of the component my server components is product page and it is doing a api request fetch request and what it is doing is it is returning me two values products and total number of total and once i have this response from my server i am passing this to my client side component so that it can create the list and this whole code is gonna run at the server and not at the client side. Now, what is the benefit of this? The benefit of having this server component, first, we are using the same language at our client and server. So as a React developer, you and I can deliver an end-to-end -end project from front-end to back-end in same language React.js. 
plus we will be having this code in one repo rather than having multiple repos and also like I'm doing a fetch request right now I can do the cache right now if you are you doing use effect you are doing API request you need to do a lot of work to make that API request response to be cached you might be using some third party languages or do some other work but with this you can do the cache easily and not just API request if you want to do a uh, form submission data submission data handling that that code which can be run on the server can be moved here in the server component so this is the advantage of having react server component or server component right now you can use nextjs they have server side component support server component support you can use that or you can use react.js 19 experimental branch i have already made a video on react.js 19 where i showed how to use react.js 19 features i already shared a repo of that i will share in the description box of this video also so you can go and try that yes there are some guidelines around server components do's and don'ts which i'm gonna create a separate video of that but for me right now this is a big thing as a react.js developer if i'm writing react.js code at my server it's like a next level of achievement and yes it requires some uh some thought process change but with time and practice it will come and that's why before you understand server components, that's why it was important for you to understand this server side and client side uh, rendering. Now, how server side components are gonna fit here. So let's assume you have this product listing component here. This is your client side and your server component would run here products. Once your application is getting loaded, this products will do the fetch request and it will return the data and it will go to the product listing. Now, instead of dependent upon any other server side language, this product is holding your React.js code altogether. So this is a huge thing. Okay, cool. I hope this video was helpful for you. One request to you is if you liked it, please share in your network. If you are a student, please share in your college, in your school, with your friends over Twitter, LinkedIn, social media, Discord, Telegram, whichever is your mode. I will be thankful for that. Let me know you like this video if you have any feedback in the comment section. I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.